now move on to our uh, third speaker today. Um, we have uh, Pati Srigiriraju, a Director for Field Development for Asia Pacific Region ProVivi. And ProVivi Pro Pro is an emerging company using pheromones to protect crops from major damaging insects. Uh, welcome, Pati. If you could just um, unmute yourself and you're welcome to put your video on. Dr. Zhang, you can turn your video off now if, if you would like. Thank okay. Yeah. Much. Ah, can you hear me okay? We can indeed. Welcome. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon, everyone. So first of all, uh, I would like to thank our organizers for providing an opportunity to talk about this innovative technology uh, to manage very serious and destructive insect pests in broadacre crops like corn. Let me also take this opportunity to introduce our company that I work for, uh, ProVV. The name actually sounds like pro to life, uh, so we don't kill anything. So it's an emerging company. We use pheromones to protect crops from major damaging insects, primarily using mating disruption. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, we all know about pheromones. Pheromones are not new to us. Um, over the past evolution has led to creation of very species specific communication in the form of pheromones. Out of pheromones, um, there are many types of pheromones. Sex pheromones are the most prominent uh, and most potent ones known to us. Where the female emits a nanogram quantities of pheromones per hour, and the males have developed a very sensitive antennae to detect them to finding their potential mates. It's very simple. In nature, very long distance olfactory senses like the smelling senses, search behavior emerges from a sequence of chain to reactions. Odor, which is like smell, encounters triggers of the encounters and triggers the male moths to fly upwind, try to find the female where the source is coming from. So the female, as you see in the in the picture down there, it's emitting nanogram quantities of pheromone, and the moth gets closer and the male gets closer to the target. It becomes very attracted to the visual objects and executes a sequence of behaviors, including the acceleration, leg extension, and landing. So the consistent exposure to the pheromone at close distances is also responsible for initiating a series of landing and mating behaviors that we see in nature. Next slide, please. So over many decades, as I just informed, artificially synthesized pheromones, which are naturally available in nature, are used for several reasons in agriculture. The first one being for monitoring purposes the presence or absence of an insect pest in the region. So this method was successfully used to detect many invasive pest species, just like fall or worm in the region. The next one is a mass trapping. So you put these pheromone in lures or attractants and then put them in the trap. And this method is used to kill insects with a trap and needs frequent changes of lures during the season. Um, and this method is often ineffective due to inefficiency of traps and typical evading behaviors of the moths at close range. So the moths keep flying into these uh, pheromone lures in the traps and they come to the close distance and then they say, oh, this is not a female, let me run away now. Similarly, attract and kill, you know, uh, the chiromones, which are like plant, uh, you know, plant ex ex uh, extracts, which are like feeding stimulants and then we can be mixed with the pheromones and then spray on the plants and come back with a harsh insecticide to kill the moths. Not a very sustainable way to manage pests. So the most effective way of using sex pheromones is to use them in a sexual confusion and often we refer to as mating disruption. So this can be used by either making a spray application like normal applications what we do in the, in the crop or by the way of slow release dispenser technologies. And this has been used uh, for many years uh, in high value crops like orchards and other places in developed countries. Uh, next slide, please. So what is mating disruption? Okay, so just close your eyes and uh, you're trying to find your friend in a very dark room, okay? The only signal is a whisper. So you're whispering to your friend uh, his or her name. So your friend can, can easily hear you because it's a dark room, but you know, they can hear you, your, your voice. Now imagine the same situation, but add really loud music to the room. 
So the principle behind the mating disruption is the same. The loud music that I'm talking about is nothing but the pheromone cloud that we create to saturate the environment with pheromones similar to those released by the female insects. The female's weaker pheromone signal, like in nanogram quantities, should not be detected in the cloud to generate a successful mating disruption. So we all know what happens uh, if there is no mating, right? Wait a minute, we're talking about insects here, okay? Some insects can reproduce without mating, but unfortunately, there are a large number of destructive insect pests that they need to mate to produce offsprings. So less mating means less viable eggs. Less viable eggs means lesser number of larvae, lesser damage, lesser insecticide applications, more natural enemies, cleaner environment, low residues on crops, more money to the farmers, high sustainability. So the list goes on. So there are, there are lots of benefits from using mating disruption if it is successfully done. Uh, next slide, please. So remember from the last few slides, uh, females release insect pheromones or sex pheromones in nanogram quantities per day for calling for males. So in order to saturate the whole area, we really need high concentration of pheromone in the area to really mask the real calling females. So we would need more than 25 gram air per hectare or more than that. So if, if, you, if we produce the pheromones in a traditional way, it would cost us a lot of money that we actually do now. And we would be sustainable or economical to use this technology in low value crops. So Provimi has successfully found a way to produce pheromones at low cost in higher quantities using cheap raw materials. We use Nobel Prize winning patented proprietary technology to produce them. It's called biocatalysis. The Provimi was founded by 2018 Nobel Prize winner, um, Dr. Frances Arnold and her graduate students, uh, Pedro Cohello and Peter Minghold. So we use their um, thoughts and innovation to produce high production with low value that we can use in low value crops to adopt this technology. Next slide, please. So ProBB has been developing both sprayable as well as dispenser technology. So ProBB, um, the dispensers would last long, uh, season long, while spray applications should be made every three, three to four weeks. So uh, sprayables are usually, it will be helpful for aerial applications in really broad acre crops like in Brazil and Argentina. But in our situation, we, I think it would be more economical uh, to use the dispensers because it lasts long for the whole season. We just need to install these dispensers on stake and leave it for season long while they release pheromone at a constant rate and create the pheromone cloud that creates mating destruction. So on the left over here, you can see that the dispensers of corn that we have installed in Indonesia, China, and Thailand. So these are made up of porous material called low density polyethylene, and it has a liquid pheromone inside these dispensers, just like a sachet. Next slide, please. So let's look at some challenges in adoption of this technology. So we are creating a pheromone cloud. The pheromone cloud will not stay at one place. It will move um, as the wind direction goes along. So we need to adopt this technology in a larger areas. So we, in rice, we have quantified it as four hectares of a minimum plot size. I think in, in, in corn, it would be around five hectares or something like that. We're still um, trying to understand that in, in uh, fragmented uh, corn growing areas of Indonesia and Thailand. So if individual farmers from land, smaller land holding adopt this technology in larger area, it works perfectly well. Next slide, please. So while we are actually in the characterization phase for four hormone dispensers in Asia, let's look at some of the data that we have generated with the same dispensers in Mexico. And we have been doing trials uh, in Africa and the CABI is, is, is a partner with us in, in Africa as well. So in Mexico, we have understood what are the benefits that we actually can create with mating disruption to create a value for the grower. On the left side of the graph that you see, it shows the leaf damage index um, on, the, on, the, on the grass, on the y-axis. It is um, you know, well known to us, it is data scale. 
zero being very low damage, nine being very high damage. So it is comparing pheromone distance of plants, the blue line, to the current growers practice, which is a red line. In both low as well as high pest populations, we can see that the blue line is always lower compared to the red line. That means we have reduced damage drastically through week 14 stage, which is almost the end of the cropping season. So we just install this fences once and they stay throughout the cropping season. We all know that you know it is very difficult to make any applications after we cross that uh, four feet high or five feet high of the crop, uh, which usually happens around 45 or 50 days. But what after that? If the pesting pest population is seen after that, uh, we cannot make applications. So dispenser technology works like works very well in those situations as well. Subsequently, we have um, we had, didn't have to spray many times, as we can see in the current grow practice. On the right side, you see that table um, where we have tested this dispenser technology in close to 2,000 hectares in 2019, and we have seen that it significantly reduced the leaf damage as well as reduced the number of insecticide applications. Next slide, please. Hathi, we've got about one minute left of your presentation, so. Last slide. Excellent. Yes, so due to reduction in damage and season-law control, we were able to see the low damage in, in the final produce as well. So one last slide. So to summarize, these are the several values for mating disruption. So broadly, you know, we have tangible benefits that can be measured, such as insecticide application reduction, yield protection, and implementation in IPM in practice. There are intangible benefits that are very little hard to measure, like social acceptance, as eco friendly technology, low toxins in the environment and then the produce, and finally, protecting our valuable insecticide molecules from developing resistance. So, with that, I'll take any questions. Excellent. I'm just going to put your, your slide up here. Um, after your presentation, you had a few challenges and opportunities that I'd, that I'd asked you to uh, think about. So I'm going to put that up there as well, because I think that's, that's quite useful to have there, Pathy. Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, very exciting technology. And I'm just going to go into the questions now. So just give me a second. Um, <clears throat> but I do, I do have one question before I start that. What, what's the difference between what you're seeing in Mexico and Southeast Asia with the fall armyworm? Yeah, so these dispenser technologies uh, work differently at, uh, at different uh, temperatures, different humidity and wind velocities. So um, the dispenser technology um, have been successfully characterized in Mexico as well as in Africa. We believe it's the same technology that works very well in Southeast Asia as well with our preliminary studies. Okay. Um, here's a question. Um, how do you look at integrating the ProVivi technology with other control products or technologies? Excellent question. Thank you very much. So we're talking about not eliminating insecticides. Okay. So we're talking about not eliminating other technologies. It's a combined effort that we need to put together, bring in all kinds of technologies to, to, use, uh, to, to use against for our new arm. Uh, management. Uh, for example, if we use making disruption techni technique for controlling a major pest like fall army worm, it will be easier to integrate other, other technologies and use as a holistic manner. Yes, good point. Um, another question here, how long does this pheromone work in the field? As I said, uh, you know, once we put the dispenser soon after uh, planting the corn or transplanting in rice, no, it will stay for season longer. So we made the dispensers in such a way that uh, we have enough active ingredient inside and we release the number of, we release the pheromone at a constant rate that stays for season long until harvest. Okay, excellent. Now, um, here's a question. If I understand correctly, fall armyworm is a multiple mating insect. How do you see the potential impact of mating disruption in multiple mating insect species such as fall armyworm? Excellent question. So that's the reason we need to have larger areas. So there are, if you're doing it in a smaller area of mating disruption, so there, the fall army worm males and females are very strong flyers. So the mated females outside the, the protected area with dispensers can mate and then 
migrate into the areas where we have dispensers and then lay eggs and then they, they, we're not going to um, uh, control them. So those uh, situations where we need to intervene and uh, make a management practice with a, with a sustainable insecticide. Okay, excellent question. Excellent question and, and good answer there. Um, I've got a question here, which is is always one that's asked: What are the costs to farmers per hectare to get the full benefit of this technology? Um, we're still in the nascent phases right now, so I cannot really answer that question. I think it will be uh, it will be a competitive one um, uh, compared to because we're giving a season long control with these dispensers. Um, so. I cannot really talk about the pricing at this point of time. I have no idea. Okay, so that's something that you're looking at. Obviously, it has to be um, uh, something that's accessible for farmers to use. Um, here's a question. What is the risk to non-target species? Pheromone components are often shared, even if the specific blend is unique. So pheromones are very species-specific, so they would not intervene with other insect species um, or any other insect pests in the crop. Uh, they're very species specific. So we are controlling the, the major pest in the crop. So the natural enemy, so we're not spraying as much as, as, as we are doing right now. Then the natural enemies will thrive and take care of the, um, um, the insect pest itself. So we have already, we have always seen with mating disruption technology, you know, the benefits of mating disruption technology that lesser applications of insecticides and lesser usage of insecticides will always increase the natural enemies in the field. Okay, great. Now, Justin, you've got 20 seconds for this last question. <laughs> How is rainfall patterns affecting the effectiveness of the pheromone? Uh, that's a good question. So rainfall affects uh, you know, the sprayables uh, quite a lot, but uh, with the dispenser technology, uh, the osmosis effect of the dispenser technology will not allow um, the, the water seeping into the dispensers. At the same time, the cloud is not really affected by the, the rainfall as such. The major important thing that we are dealing with now is uh, the temperature fluctuations uh, and the uh, high relative humidities that we see in Southeast Asia compared to other regions in the world. Excellent, thank you. And that was, a, that was pretty close to 20 seconds. Thank you very much, Pathy. That was an excellent presentation. Another um, very um, informative um, uh, slides there with lots of information and you have lots of questions. So if you could go online and have a look in the question and answers, there's plenty for you around where can we um, access this and, and also technical questions. Um, so please um, jump on the Q&A box and, and answer some of those questions that would be most appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you.